Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A massive natural gas explosion rocks Livingston County, a huge crater in the ground as people as far away as 50 miles say they felt it. The explosion happened right around 930 this morning and officials almost immediately told residents nearby to shelter in place. It happened at Center Road right off of US 23 in Tyrone Township, shutting the highway down as consumer crews got to work on it to try to fix it. Megan Woods live there at the scene tonight. Megan. Yeah, con consumers energy is still on scene investigating what may have happened, but what they tell us is they still have part of this intersection, US 23 and center closed, and they know exactly what happened. This natural gas line uh, ruptured, but they're still trying to figure out why that happened. It was a billowing smoke, you know, and I mean, it went pretty high. I was kind of, I've never seen anything like that. Dennis Hussey was sitting inside Tyrone Hills Golf Club when he heard the loud noise. He thought it was coming from the expressway nearby. That happens a lot. You hear these loud booms, you know, from a tire from a semi or something, you know, plus the windows shook. Then he saw the smoke. Looked out the north window and he saw this huge explosion there and and then that kind of subsided a little bit a few minutes later, and then all of a sudden, boom, another one, you know, right behind it. It left quite the crater. Here's the view from Drone 4. Fenton Township Fire Chief Ryan Voles says that crater is about 20 feet deep. Fire crews were on scene helping consumers energy clean up the mess. Took a chunk of probably of all 30, 40 feet of steel pipe out of the ground. No one was hurt, but mud, stone, and steel flew onto US 23 and old US 23. All lanes were closed for a couple of hours. The consumer's truck that was sitting right in front of the blast. So it's pretty big, pretty big crater. Um, a lot of lucky people today. Yeah, and that consumer's energy truck that was nearby, along with two other cars, were damaged by the blast. But again, no one was hurt. And coming up tonight at 6, we give you a listen to what some of the people driving by heard as that explosion happened. Live in Fenton, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Megan, you mentioned cars being damaged. What should somebody do if they realize that their car was damaged, whether it was parked there or traveling by at the time on US 23? So the fire chief says that you need to make a police report and also contact your insurance company. Yeah, all right, we'll find out if there are any others that may have been caught up unwittingly into it. All right, Megan, let's move now to Detroit's east side where two people are dead in a suspected case of CO poisoning. It happened at a home on Algonquin, not far from Connor in East Warren. Our Sean Lay was there today as investigators worked to figure out what happened. A concerned family member got a very bad feeling when they hadn't heard from their loved one in more than 24 hours. That was very unusual. We're talking about no one answering the phone, no one responding to any text messages. That concerned family member came here to the home on Algonquin early this morning and went inside. So they went by the home, they knocked on the door, they entered the home, and they saw two people that were passed out. Uh, come to find out it was carbon monoxide poisoning. There was a generator in the home. The generator wasn't running. Two people found dead in this home on Algonquin on Detroit's east side early this morning. Two bodies in a bedroom and a generator not running positioned in the kitchen. We're going to assume the generator was running and ran out of gas. The generator probably was to keep that house warm, keep it heated, keep power. You can't put a generator in the home. Gas run generators give off deadly carbon monoxide fumes, fumes that are odorless and colorless. The Consumer Product Safety Commission looked at a dozen years where 900 people died while using a portable generator in or close to a home. Detroit Fire now concerned that as it gets warmer in the afternoon, it's still cold at night and in the morning, and some may be looking for alternative ways to heat their homes if they have to. Keep that generator outside. Keep that window cracked if you think you have any carbon monoxide and get out. Call 911, call us. Call 911, call us. We're live now. Been checking on this sad case all day long, and tonight there is new information. One of the people discovered in that home, one of the victims, a, 20, a, a woman, she's only 26 years old. Her friend was talking to me. She could barely speak, saying her friend went over to that house just a few hours before she was discovered. Everything else under investigation. We're live tonight. Sean Lee, Local 4, back to you.
sad. Okay, Sean, thank you. The U.S. will send more weapons to help Ukrainians try to push back Russia's relentless attack. And that attack continues to involve civilian structures. Ukraine's emergency service says an apartment building in Kyiv, just a few kilometers from the city center, took major damage this morning. Residents had to be evacuated. Many had to be treated for their injuries. For the latest, let's get to Alice Barr. She's in Washington, where Congress heard a new plea for help from Ukraine's president. Good evening. After that stirring speech from Ukraine's president, President Biden, feeling the pressure to highlight the military aid the U.S. has provided to Ukraine, also taking the new step of calling Russia's president a war criminal. In a history-making address to Congress today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky bringing the death and devastation racking his country into vivid focus inside the U.S. Capitol. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. Zelensky pleading for more help to stop the Russian assault, speaking directly to President Biden. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. President Biden then laying out what the U.S. has done to support Ukraine as it fights back, pointing to an additional $800 million in military aid, from anti-aircraft systems to drones. This could be a long and difficult battle, but the American people will be steadfast in our support of the people of Ukraine in the face of Putin's immoral, unethical attacks on civilian population. The president, for the first time, accusing Russian President Vladimir Putin of war crimes. Oh, I think he is a war criminal. But he remains unmoved on Zelensky's central plea for a no-fly zone to deter Russian airstrikes that have hit hospitals, homes and schools. Through an interpreter, President Zelensky invoking Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. Also asking for help delivering Polish fighter jets to his military. Lawmakers in both parties stirred into action. Our country's got to do more. But President Biden is resisting steps he believes could escalate the conflict into World War III. In an interview with NBC's Lester Holt, Zelensky responding, nobody knows whether that wider war has already started. There are some signs of progress in peace talks between Ukraine and Russia, but President Vladimir Putin gave his own angry speech to the Russian people today that showed no sign of compromise. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. Okay, Allison, we spoke with Senator Gary Peters, who gave his reaction to Ukrainian President Zelensky's speech this morning to Congress. When you hear President uh, Zelensky, uh, he's uh, just an inspiration, uh, the strength that he has shown, uh, and an inspiration for the Ukrainian people uh, and what they are going through right now, uh, the images that we see every day on the television of what's happening. Uh, certainly the video that was played to us uh, in, the, in the speech was incredibly powerful to, to see this wonderful, uh, vibrant uh, country in peace, and then how they're being torn apart now by this, uh, the, this war that uh, Putin has brought uh, to the country. It, is, it was a dramatic uh, piece of video, and I don't think anybody could watch that and not be, be moved in a significant way. Well, as Alice Barr mentioned, ahead on NBC Nightly News, Lester Holt speaks one-on-one -on -one with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Their conversation just after Zelensky gave that address before Congress, pleading for help, what he told Lester his country needs. All right, let's turn to the coronavirus. The state reporting 1,540 new cases over the past two days. So the average there is 770 cases a day. 118 more deaths also being reported over that same two-day period. And the seven-day moving average continues to fall. Back on March 2nd, we were averaging 1,000 cases per day. Today, that average sits at 675. Kind of felt like spring today <laughs> outside, didn't it? I know dare, somebody who thinks it is. Dare we say it, but uh, yeah, the good part is it's going to get warmer tomorrow. And uh, look what we look have here. Look at Joe Cool out there. <laughs> Paul Gross outside getting some of that vitamin D. <laughs> Man, I tell you, what a day. I mean, th you know, 60s. I mean, it's just fantastic out there. Let's talk about current weather and we'll uh, show you some of the numbers. Now, not everybody is sharing in the wealth. You can see there's the Ann Arbor sky cam. We had some May sun and blue sky over Ann Arbor today. Look at that, 66 at Metro, 67 in Ann Arbor, 63 in Lapeer, but 
Sorry, Monroe, you're getting that air off of Lake Erie there. Yeah, that's a cold air, and that's 56 for you. So let's take a look at cloud cover. You can see the cumulus clouds that have uh, popped up this afternoon. Those are going to fade out after sunset. We'll have maybe a few clouds around tonight, but more clear than clouds. And temperatures this evening are going to drop down through the 40s to the mid to upper 40s by midnight. Even warmer tomorrow. We'll have that St. Patrick's Day forecast in just a few minutes, guys, but I need to finish my drink first that you're in a good spot, but I can think of one that might be slightly better because the sun is shining. The birds are chirping down in Lakeland, Florida. After a long silence, we can also now add the crack of the bat in the air. Jamie Edmonds is at Tiger Spring training as we all get ready for some baseball and apparently no shortage of fans. Happy to see them back on the field, Jamie. That's right, Devin. The mood was that of excitement today. Day three of on field workouts. You know, fans didn't even know if this season would happen. So today, when they got to see their favorite players, they were pumped. Cabrero, that's what I come to see. I got like a, a duo, too. So. Very interesting, and my daughter brings me down to the, all the games. <laughs> These ladies from Detroit are first timers to spring training, and they never stop smiling. Watching the players work out, getting autographs on the stuffed animal they call Clubhouse Buddy. Oh no, these are all, um, autographs. This is the general manager, um, Mr. Avila, and number 30, Rodriguez and the rest of them I can't read. The Aslins from Mason always come to Tiger Town. This is like 20 years, plus I used to come when I was a kid with my parents. What do they all have in common? They're happy baseball is back and can't wait for the season. I hear you guys are going to opening day too. Oh yeah, I'm gonna That's be right there. Those are true fans right there. They're here today. They're going to opening day in Detroit at April 8th. The opening here at Joker Marchant Stadium is Friday against the Phillies, and some people I talk to will be at that game as well. Now, it's raining a little bit, but not raining on our parade here at spring training. Guys, back to you. Not a chance. We've been waiting too long for it to happen. All right, Jamie. It's a project that could transform part of Detroit. Tonight, there's new progress to report on a plan to overhaul I-375, and it's coming this spring. Also looks a lot different. New tonight, taking a tour of Greektown Casino after a $30 million overhaul. Jason? How do we fight inflation? Well, it starts by raising the interest rate. This interest rate hike that the Fed's doing is something that I've been expecting for some time. Coming up, we'll explain how it affects people who have trouble paying off their credit card every month, or if you're thinking about buying a home or a car.